Gang, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the art of integration. We're going to take a look at another integral involving a combination of powers of sines and cosines in a rational expression. Now, there's a standard substitution, which we took a look at in a previous video, link down below in the description, so check that one out first. And the substitution that we use to get rid of the powers of sines and cosines is t equal tangent of x, and the relationship, why we want to use this substitution, is the derivative of tangent is a squared trig function, secant squared, and I like to think of that as being equivalent to 1 over cosine squared. And that's going to guide us through how we get started with this integral. Now, we're going to want to kind of use a basic algebraic trick to get started. The one that I like to use a lot is multiplying by 1. Now, in the previous problem, we thought of 1 as 1 over cosine squared divided by 1 over cosine squared. But let's take a look at this integral, and this is just a warm-up for one that we're going to be getting to next in the art of integration. In your denominator, you have in the parentheses a cosine squared, and then that squared. That looks like cosine to the fourth power. So we're going to try here multiplying by 1 in the form 1 over cosine to the fourth power of x divided by 1 over cosine to the fourth power of x. So let's go ahead and write that down first. So let's just write our original integral. Sine squared x divided by 1 plus cosine squared of x squared. And we're going to multiply by 1. But now, since we are seeing that our denominator behaves like cosine to the fourth power of x, we're going to try to cancel that out to make use of our substitution. So here, we're going to multiply by 1. 1 over cosine to the fourth power of x. And then divide it by the same thing. A quantity divided by itself is always 1. All right, and this is where we're going to use the factors a little bit differently. First, the 1 over cosine to the fourth power of x in the numerator, we're going to split that apart. One factor we're going to use to put underneath sine squared. And we're going to write that as sine squared over cosine squared. The other factor here, we're going to split off for our differential. Because again, we want a factor of secant squared, or as I like to use it, 1 over cosine squared to convert the differential. So really what we're doing here is we're thinking of this 1 over cosine to the fourth power of x as 1 over cosine squared times 1 over cosine squared. All right, so again, one factor we're going to put under the numerator, and then the other factor we're going to strip off for the differential. The real work here is taking the 1 divided by cosine to the fourth power of x in the denominator and then distributing that into this denominator. Let's go ahead and work that out. All right, so here we have a fraction multiplying there. Let's write that as 1 plus cosine squared of x squared. And then we're going to take that denominator and put it right under there. So we're going to have cosine to the fourth power of x. All right, now there's a lot of ways that you can simplify this. We're going to think of cosine to the fourth power of x as cosine squared of x squared. And that way we can use basic properties of exponents and fractions to combine the numerator and denominator squared into a single fraction. So let's take our time with this. All right, and now since the numerator and denominator are both raised to the same power, we can write that as a single fraction squared. The numerator will be 1 plus cosine squared. And then in the denominator, cosine squared of x. All right, and now we can get some powers to cancel. 
Split that up, you'll have one over cosine squared. We're gonna write that as secant squared. And then you'll have cosine squared divided by cosine squared, that's one. All right, and that looks a lot better. That is your denominator once you take the one over cosine to the fourth power of x and distribute that in there. Now, you wanna go one step further because again, we're making use of the substitution t equals tangent of x in order to get the one over cosine squared for the differential. So here, we're gonna to need to convert secant squared to tangent squared, but that's simple using a basic Pythagorean identity. So if you go ahead and plug that in, secant squared, we're gonna think of that as one plus tangent squared, the one here and the plus one in there, those will combine together. So we can write this denominator as tangent squared of x plus two squared. And that's most of the work for the first part, using the substitution to get the powers of sines and cosines to cancel to make use of this substitution. Let's go ahead and put this all together. And again, we did a few things already. The numerator, one over cosine to the fourth power of x, we split that apart. We take one of those one over cosine squared factors, put it underneath sine squared. And we're gonna be using the fact that sine squared divided by cosine squared, that's tangent squared. So here, distribute one factor in, you'll get tangent squared. The other factor from one over cosine to the fourth, we're gonna strip off and put next to the differential. And we already worked out over to the side here, simplifying, taking the one over cosine to the fourth in the denominator here and distributing it into this denominator. And what we found is that comes out to tangent squared x plus two squared. So that's your denominator here. Tangent squared of x plus two squared. And now we have everything we need to make use of our substitution, which is t equals tangent of x. So if you go ahead and write that out, we can now use this substitution, t equals tangent of x, the differential dt, the derivative is secant squared, but again, I like to think of that as one over cosine squared. And if you go ahead and convert all the different parts here, you get first t squared in the numerator. And then in the denominator here, you'll get t squared plus two squared. And then one over cosine squared x dx, that converts to dt. And at that point, we now get an integral, a basic rational function in terms of t, and this integral is not fun to evaluate. Let's go ahead and get to that. The resulting integral that you get involving the rational function of t is not fun to evaluate. There's no art to this evaluation. There's no creativity, just brute force work. Now there's two approaches, one of which does involve a little bit of creativity or art, we can at least use the trick of adding zero. So if we take the numerator, t squared, we can add two and subtract two, adding zero. And if you split that up to two integrals, t squared plus two, you'll get a factor of that to cancel, giving you this integral, which comes out to a straightforward inverse tangent. The other integral you get, that's only simple if you are aware of an integral reduction formula. And if you go ahead and use that, just go ahead and apply the values a as one, b as two, and n as two. You can go ahead and apply that and get another integral that leads to an inverse tangent. And combine everything together, you'll get to this end result. Now I will say, I am not familiar or like to use myself integral reduction formulas because you have to know the formula. Instead, I always like to rely on fundamentals and we can go back to our calc two integration methods and approach this 
using a trig sub. And we can use the substitution t equals square root of 2. Think of 2 as square root of 2 squared. So our substitution will be t equals square root of 2 times tangent of theta. And the rest of the work is very tedious but straightforward. Use your substitution, simplify the resulting trigonometric integral. You'll basically get the integral of sine squared with some extra factors out front. And from there, you're gonna use two other trig identities, which you're probably familiar with. First, we reduce the power, and then to convert back to your function of t, once you integrate cosine of two theta, you'll get sine of two theta, and you can use the double angle identity for sine to get sine and cosine of theta, which you can determine in terms of t from your conversion triangle from your substitution. Now, go through that at your own pace. It's very tedious. It's not fun. There's, again, no art to that. But let's go ahead and make use of the end result. Go through all that work, and you get this as your antiderivative in terms of t. The only thing that we need to do is now back substitute our original substitution for t in terms of x. Now that we've evaluated our integral involving a basic rational function in terms of t, we just need to back substitute. Now again, the point for this problem is just to see how we can be a little bit creative in making use of some basic substitutions. Now again, this integral is not fun to evaluate, but we st can still can do that. And at this point, we just need to back substitute our substitution t as tangent of x. And if you go ahead and do that, you have some factors here, square root of two over four times inverse tangent of t, but we're substituting t back as tangent of x. So we get inside there tangent of x over square root of two, and then minus one half and substitute back here and you'll get this function that's again a rational function of t tangent x divided by tangent squared of x plus 2. And that is our antiderivative. Now again, the point here was just to get prepared for one that's a little more challenging, which we'll be getting to in the next video in the Art of Integration. Now the work here wasn't too bad, just some algebraic simplifications and then a creative use of splitting apart one over cosine to the fourth power of x. And once we did that, we got an integral that was really not fun to evaluate. But again, that's not the point of this series. We're trying to make use of creative substitutions, which is the art of integrating. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.